Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. Today we're going to talk about CanJam New York 2020, which is happening at the New York Marriott Marquis Hotel in Times Square on February 15th and 16th. Kicking off the CanJam season in New York is almost poetic, given that the first national HeadFi meet that grew into what eventually became CanJam over the years took place in New York back in 2006. So every time we come back to New York, it feels like a homecoming. Now this year's CanJam New York would not be possible without our CanJam New York sponsors, so thank you to Dunu, Headphone Guru, Hi-Fi Plus, QDC, and Cobas for supporting the show. Now let's jump right into it with just a taste of the monumental lineup that you'll experience firsthand at CanJam New York, February 15th and 16th, 2020. By now, I think most of you know what this is. This is the Cord Electronics Hugo 2 DAC Amp, a favorite of head fires the world over and still my top reference portable DAC Amp. Heck, the Hugo 2 is one of my reference DACs, period. Now, while you may be very familiar with the Hugo 2, it can turn into something else completely when you add this to it. At CanJam New York, Cord Electronics is unveiling this. This is the Cord 2Go. And once you attach the 2Go to the Hugo 2, things get very interesting. Handmade in the UK and built around a powerful triple core audio processor, the new Cord 2Go adds high performance network connectivity with fully featured Wi Fi and Ethernet enabled streamer capabilities, bringing the sound quality of the Hugo 2's reference class DAC technology to high res streaming. The 2Go also has two 2 terabyte rated micro SD card slots for digital storage and playback, further enabling the Hugo 2 as a high capacity solid state digital music library, in addition to its DAC, preamp, and headphone amp capabilities all of which can be experienced in the palm of your hand or in your main rig using battery power or mains power. The 2Go also offers Tidal, Cobas, and internet radio playback with Spotify and others being added down the road. And as a huge Rune fan, I'm absolutely thrilled that the 2Go is Rune ready. It also offers gapless audio and DOP BitPerfect support, as well as being fully DLNA compliant and AirPlay compatible. Another key feature of the 2Go is its auto switching input function. Every audio interface is always on. Switching between inputs is as easy as hitting play on the chosen control point app, and the 2Go switches between all its inputs automatically, giving a seamless listening experience when playing music from different sources or streaming services. I think the auto switching of inputs is very cool. I was able to set up the 2Go very quickly using Chords Go Figure configuration app on my Android smartphone. There's also a version for iOS. Setup in the updated version of GoFigure features a new fast Wi-Fi configuration option as well as a new Bluetooth LE configuration option. And now that it's all set up, I use the Hugo 2 and 2Go combo at one of my small desks in a distant corner of my house. With this, I control Rune through my Android phone and high-res stream from my multi-terabyte music library on my network storage to be dac and amped by the Hugo 2 into any headphone of my choice. Oh, and I do have other use cases planned for this combo and we'll post about it on the forums over time. Anyway, I know a lot of Hugo 2 owners have been waiting for the 2Go for quite some time and will be thrilled it's finally coming. And as if the 2Go wasn't enough, this arrived separately at HeadFi HQ today, and this one was actually very much a surprise to me. It's another new product by Cord Electronics called the Cord 2U, and the 2U mates with the 2Go. Let me explain. According to Cord, the 2U came about due to the many requests they received for their streaming technology to be used with other DACs, including non-Cord DACs. In the case of the 2Go, they did not want to restrict the use of 2Go to only the Hugo 2. Simply put, the 2U itself is a sonically transparent audio interface unit that, when combined with 2Go, forms a standalone streamer that can be used with any other DAC or AV processor. So what's going to be my first and most likely use case for the 2U 2Go combo? I'm going to network stream to them, digitally feeding the M-Scaler and Hugo TT2 combo. In short, I'm going to turn the M-Scaled Hugo TT2 into an M-Scaled streamer. Again, you can also use it with other DACs and processors, but the M-Scaled Hugo TT2 is my current reference DAC amp. Now it's going to be my reference streaming DAC amp. There are so many use cases for the 2U 2Go, so visit Cord's exhibit to see it in action. Head, or Heinz Electrodynamic Designs, is coming to CanJam New York with production units of their new headphone, the world's first and only full-range air motion transformer, or AMT, headphone. Now sound is air movement, and unlike pistonic transducers, including dynamic voice coil, planar magnetic, electrostatics, ribbon-based drivers, unlike those, the AMT drivers first pioneered by Oscar Heil and now perfected by Klaus Heinz, co-founder of Head Audio, employ pleated diaphragms that can accelerate air up to four times faster than pistonic transducers, according to Head. Now for the headphone, they invented a variation of the AMT driver with new variable geometry folds to cover the full audio band. 
The end result is a headphone that is exceedingly capable of extracting immense amounts of detail, forceful enough to deliver impactful macrodynamics, and delicate enough to resolve even the most minute microdynamics and detail from your music. The headphone also images wide, and I would describe the headphone's tonal balance as neutral and accurate, a studio monitor type sound, which should be no surprise given Head's experience with studio monitor loudspeakers, as well as co-founder Frederick Knopf's experience as a mastering engineer. If you've been attending recent Can Jams, you may remember hearing previous iterations of the headphone at past events. But Can Jam New York represents a milestone for Head. It'll be the first Can Jam at which a production headphone can be heard. For well over a year, Head has been using previous Can Jam exhibitions to gather impressions from Head buyers around the world, employing our feedback to continually improve and refine the headphone. And now it's time to hear what Head's done with it. The headphone is a big, heavy headphone, and it's magnificent. I think this one will be at the top of many Head buyers' lists of things to listen to, as the show impressions of the headphone prototypes have been absolutely glowing, to say the least. At Can Jam Shanghai last November, Dunu was showing their DK3001 Pro IEM. The DK3001 Pro uses four custom Knowles balanced armature drivers and one 13.5mm dynamic driver that has beryllium bonded on both sides of the diaphragm. The Dunu DK3001 Pro has been a joy to listen to, with a balanced tuning, bass I'd call neutral, controlled and tight, mids that I'd call on the richer side of neutral, and a nice sparkly treble. The DK3001 Pro actually matches up pretty tightly with the Harman around ear on ear target, and it also has very low THD. All of this and the DK3001 Pro is reasonably priced and so provides outstanding value. Now, if you want to hear what Dunu can do at the higher end of the performance and price spectrum, then definitely make sure to audition their new Dunu Luna, which they're calling the world's first pure beryllium rolled foil diaphragm flagship dynamic IEM. The Dunu Luna is a strong, well-engineered entrant into the flagship IEM province. To be clear, the rolled foil beryllium used in the Dunu Luna is the finest caliber of acoustic-grade beryllium I'm aware of, sourced from Materian Corporation. Now, beryllium is about as ideal a material for a dynamic driver diaphragm as is currently available. Its high stiffness to mass ratio is extreme. However, to have a fantastically rigid, fast, and light beryllium diaphragm is only a start. You can squander its benefits with less than ideal motion during excursion. To that end, Dunu meticulously engineered the driver's suspension to maintain pistonic motion. The Luna also uses what Dunu calls an N52 neodymium magnetic system designed for much higher magnetic flux across its fancy voice coil. Now one of the ways all of this manifests itself is extraordinarily low total harmonic distortion. When I first saw the Luna's THD measurement, I asked Axel Chloris to separately measure it again just to confirm what I was seeing and he got the same result. The Luna's total harmonic distortion is orders of magnitude lower than most other IEMs and headphones. I can only think of a couple of others that can match or come close to this. Of course, none of this matters if the tuning is off, but thankfully Dunu tuned the Luna's frequency response to compete with other flagship class IEMs on the market. They opted for what I'd call a safe, accessible tuning, bass that's more flat tuned but somehow still rich in tone, mids that are linear, and treble that's organic and never etched. And what might be a safer tonal balance is made vibrant by virtue of the Luna's excellent overall resolving ability. The Dunu Luna is a must-hear new flagship IEM at CanJam New York, so don't miss it. For Can Jam New York this year, there are a total of five seminar sessions over the two days, and none of them are repeated. Also, seating is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly so that you don't miss the seminars you want to see. The seminars will happen in the Palace and Winter Garden rooms directly adjacent to the Broadway Ballroom. On Saturday, February 15th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., Court Electronics lead designer Rob Watts will present DAC Design Part 1 Interpolation Filters. In this talk, Rob will discuss interpolation filters, which are at the heart of all DACs, and why they are crucial subjectively. He also explains what a tap is and discusses the importance of transients from a perception point of view. On Saturday, February 15th, from 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., Thomas Tsai, Dunu's Executive Director of Global Strategy and Management, will present Miniaturizing High-End Speaker Technology for the In-Ear, the creation and development of Dunu's flagship Luna. In this talk, Thomas will take a deep dive into the completion of Dunu's innovative Moonshot project, the long, arduous development of Luna's pure beryllium foil diaphragm and unprecedented speaker-like driver construction. With a speaker design never before attempted for earphones, Dunu achieves a world first with Luna. On Saturday, February 15th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., there will be the Can Jam New York 2020 Personal Audio AMA, Ask Me Anything. Is there a correct sound signature, and if so, what might that be? How do headphone engineers achieve their desired tuning? What is a tap exactly, and why can't we ever seem to get enough of them? How much do measurements truly matter? 
you have questions, bring them to the CanJam New York 2020 Personal Audio AMA and let our distinguished panel of Shankar Thiagasamadram from Odyssey, Dan Foley from Audio Precision, Rob Watts from Court Electronics, Andy Regan from Dan Clark Audio, Axel Grell from Grell Audio Consulting, Freddie Knopp from Head Audio, and Jan Meyer from Meyer Audio answer them all. This talk will be moderated by Warren Chi of HeadFi.org. On Sunday, February 16th, from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., Dan Foley from Audio Precision will present the intricacies of testing headphones, interpreting measurements, and how distortion specs can be misleading. Why is headphone frequency response never flat like a loudspeaker? Is total harmonic distortion, THD, an appropriate metric for discerning sound quality? How do we know published specifications are even valid? If you have questions as to how published specs can help indicate sound quality, this seminar is for you. Join Dan Foley as he reviews the common measurements of any transducer, frequency response, distortion, phase, etc. How headphone testing differs from that of loudspeakers and how published distortion specs may not truly indicate a product's audible distortion behavior. And finally, on Sunday, February 16th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., Court Electronics lead designer Rob Watts will present DAC Design Part 2, Conversion. Rob continues the DAC Design discussion and looks at various ways to convert digital data to analog with pros and cons on each approach. He also talks about why DACs have such a big impact on performance and what objective criteria are important for high-end audio. Audio 46 will be exhibiting at CanJam New York. Audio 46 has grown into one of the leading headphone specialty stores in New York City. They're authorized dealers of everything they sell, and what they sell is a carefully curated selection of headphones and IEMs. And at CanJam New York, Audio 46 will be exhibiting with a wonderful selection of the products they represent. Showing on the screen now is a list of some of the brands and products you can expect to hear at Audio 46's CanJam exhibit. I'm curious about the brands I see listed whose products I'm completely unfamiliar with, like Strauss and Wagner and Sivga. But one of the headphones Audio 46 is showing that I am very familiar with is the Ultrasone Edition 15. In my opinion, the Openback Ultrasone Edition 15 is the best sounding headphone Ultrasone has ever made. It has rich bass, warm but articulate mids, and a clear airy treble that imparts no harshness or artificial edge. And the Ultrasone Edition 15 presents it all with a wide, richly layered three-dimensional head stage that's airy but never overly diffuse. And I think that's due to the angle of the drivers in Ultrasone's S-Logic EX arrangement. Speaking of Ultrasone, Audio 46 will have an Ultrasone show special. There will be 15% off Ultrasone models. Look for a sale on Sennheisers and CanJam specials from Grado and Final. I know at Audio 46's exhibit, you'll be able to get a bonus 4.4mm or 2.5mm balanced cable with the Final A8000 in addition to the standard 3.5mm terminated cable. Make sure to stop by Audio 46 to check out all the show specials and to hear some fantastic gear. When you visit Hi-Fi Man's exhibit, you're likely to see all the things you expect to see there. Cost no object, flagship electrostatic over-ears, ultra-premium planar magnetic over-ears like the Hi-Fi Man Susvara and HE-1000, high-end IEMs like the RE-2000. But if you can look past the wired stuff at Hi-Fi Man's exhibit, then you'll see these. Fantastic wireless headphones by Hi-Fi Man. This is the Hi-Fi Man Ananda BT, and this wireless headphone marks a watershed moment for me in this industry. Because one of my favorite headphones of all time is the Sennheiser HD650. It's a headphone that scales beautifully and scales way up depending on the rig you put in front of it. But we're at that point with the Hi-Fi Man Ananda BT, where we have a wireless headphone that to my ears, and I think many of you would agree when you hear the Ananda BT, that to my ears sounds better wirelessly from my smartphone than the wired HD650 does driven by any rig. This is the first purpose-built wireless headphone that I can say that about. Wireless has gotten there. The Ananda BT, like its wired self, has a neutralish tonal balance with deep bass extension and wonderful bass impact and detail. That detailed, resolving, even-handed nature continues through the mids and treble. The Ananda BT presents with big, airy, open imaging as well. Again, to me, this is a watershed wireless headphone in the world of HeadFi. Now, if the Ananda BT is out of your budget for a wireless headphone, then make sure to check out the new Hi-Fi Man Deva at CanJam, which will be the first opportunity to hear it outside of China. The Hi-Fi Man Deva uses what's called a super nano planar driver that shares some similarities with the Susvara. The Susvara's diaphragm is, of course, substantially thinner. But starting with the similar driver structure, the Deva was inspired by the flagship planar magnetic Susvara. And the Deva is as close as you'll wirelessly get to the Susvara at the Deva's affordable price. Now, I've been using it from the Huawei P30 Pro smartphone using LDAC. Anyway, with the Ananda BT and the Deva, Hi-Fi Man is showing that they're very serious about wireless Hi-Fi. 
When I was at E-Earphone's Portable Audio Festival in Tokyo in December, my friend Sasaki, whom many of you know from his Japanese audio blog, Music To Go, he asked me to accompany him to visit Final's new physical store, which was just down the road. When we got there, Final's CEO, Mitsuru Hosu, greeted us to show us around. And what a great store and location. They even have an isolation booth for a quiet listening environment, inside of which I had my first listen to this, Final's new flagship IEM, the Final A8000. The Final A8000 is an absolutely superb in-ear, and it's definitely moved into my IEM rotation as one of my reference in-ears. The A8000, like its over-ear D8000 sibling, is a product of what I think is a move by Final in the last few years under the stewardship of Hosu-san toward a stronger focus on pure engineering, but without abandoning the more emotional, spiritual approach that had been Final's hallmark under its legendary late founder, Kanemori Takai. Now, I love the direction Hosu-san has been steering the ship, and the Final A8000 is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Aesthetically, the final A8000's design language is pure final, uniquely sculpted, gorgeous materials and construction quality. Inside, though, is pure engineering. The A8000 uses a single full-range dynamic driver per side, the diaphragm of which is made of solid beryllium, and final is using acoustic-grade beryllium of the highest quality. Now, final focused a great deal on both measurements and subjective evaluation, and the result is a reference class IEM that happens to follow the Harman in-ear target rather closely, but with a brighter, more incisive top end. To my ears, though, it's never harsh, always resolving. Now, the A8000 is at the outer limits of what I want for treble presence, yet it doesn't betray my personal predilection for a smoother top end. To my ears, it's what I call a smooth bright signature with rich, impactful lows. Again, to my ears, absolutely superb. The final A8000 also has what may be the very lowest total harmonic distortion we've ever measured from a headphone, whether in-ear or over-ear. Again, Final has engineered this product beautifully, so kudos to them for that. Now, the A8000 is definitely one of the can't-miss IEMs at Can Jam New York, so don't miss it. Abyss Headphones tops the list for many a high-end head fire when it comes to price-no-object flagship performance. Abyss Headphones' venerable AB1266 platform, the most current version of their flagship being the AB1266 Phi TC, is otherworldly good. Now, you want to make sure to audition the AB1266 Phi TC at CanJam New York to both feel and hear one of the hallmarks of Abyss Sound, which is a unique sort of high-resolving ability with a physical, visceral impact. For the CanJam New York preview this year, though, I want to focus on Abyss's Diana headphone models, the latest two models having evolved the Diana platform with improved comfort and improved performance and sound. I've talked about the Diana Phi before, the flagship of the Diana platform. The Diana Phi's drivers were taken from the AB1266 Phi CC and adapted to fit the Diana chassis. The Diana Phi is the closest you can currently get to the AB1266 sound and performance, but in a more manageable to carry and more conventional wearing chassis. For some, though, the Diana Phi was a bit of a budget stretch, so Abyss Headphones most recently released the more affordably priced Abyss Diana V2. The Diana V2 is a substantial evolution of the original Diana, the one that came before the Diana 5 and the one that began the Diana platform. The Diana V2 improves on the original Diana with much larger, much softer ear pads. They're actually very similar, perhaps even identical to the Diana 5's ear pads. Now this was a much needed improvement. And again, both the Diana 5 and now the Diana V2 wear much more like conventional headphones than the first generation Diana. Versus the original Diana, Abyss also updated the V2's drivers, the result being more smoothness in body and substantial gains in resolving ability. The Diana Phi no doubt maintains the edge in resolution versus the Diana V2, but the V2 is a worthy competitor to its Phi sibling. The V2 is also a bit warmer, which I think some might prefer. Anyway, Abyss Headphones exhibit is always a can't-miss stop at CanJam, and the Diana V2 will be the headphone in my hotel room rig, replacing the Diana Phi for this trip. When I was a much younger audiophile, after reading about DCS's ring DAC technology, and especially after reading many positive reviews and attending audio shows where I'd hear DCS's DACs, I really wanted to own a DCS ring DAC based DAC, but they were all far too expensive for my youthful budget. The closest my budget would allow me to get was a CD player by Arcam that used an IC version of DCS's ring DAC technology. So it wasn't full DCS, but I was quite happy just getting a taste of ring DAC spinning CDs through that Arcam. Anyway, many years later, and I'm excited that DCS is now designing products for head fires like us. 
At CanJam New York, look for the DCS Bar Talk, one of DCS's latest DAX. And very significantly, where we're concerned, the DCS Bar Talk has a custom-designed DCS headphone amplifier built in. This amplifier has very low output impedance, can output up to 1.4 watts into 33 ohms and 150 milliwatts into 300 ohms. It has four different output levels for greater flexibility with different kinds of headphones, and it also has switchable crossfeed, showing just how seriously DCS views their move into headphone audio. As for the Bartox Ring DAC, I'm not going to venture an explanation of Ring DAC technology in this brief CanJam preview segment. I'm not even sure I could explain it well even with more time, but here's a short description from DCS. It is not based on another manufacturer's standard DAC chip. Ring DAC is a bespoke digital signal processing engine designed by and unique to DCS. It's a clean sheet solution running code written and regularly refined by DCS engineers. It uses a network of FPGAs programmed to run DCS firmware that does all digital filtering and digital to analog conversion. Now one of the claims DCS makes about their Ring DAC architecture is superior linearity. So I did a linearity measurement of the Bartok on the Audio Precision APX555 analyzer, and as you can see, the Bartok was essentially perfectly linear all the way down to a very low minus 120 dBFS. I also had the Bartok hooked up while I was preparing to do a few jitter measurements using Audio Precision's JTest Jitter Measurement Utility, and the Bartok turned in one of the lowest jitter measurements I've seen on that. Anyway, again, I'm so glad to see DCS entering our part of the audio world, so make sure to stop by their exhibit to hear the DCS bar talk. In terms of tonal balance, I think the Focal Stelia is the best sounding closed back headphone currently available and perhaps ever released. The Stelia measures closer to the Harman headphone target than any other over-ear headphone we've measured so far, and I happen to be quite fond of the Harman target for over-ears. The Stelia also images very coherently with solid image object placement. It's not the widest image in closed back, but I tend to prioritize tonal balance over soundstage. The Focal Stelia uses the same solid beryllium M-shaped diaphragm as the Focal Utopia headphone, but with a completely different motor structure optimized for a closed back design. It also has a richer, smoother sounding signature than the open back Utopia, which by comparison puts the Stelia ahead for me. The Focal Stelia is also a handsome piece made with some of the finest full grain leather I've seen and felt on a headphone. Of course at CanJam, Focal will also have all their other headphone models to audition, but I'd suggest you start with the Stelia, especially if you're looking for a closed back model. Focal will also have their new Focal Arch DAC and headphone amplifier at CanJam New York. The Focal Arch was co-developed with Micro Mega. The Arch has an AKM based DAC section and its amplifier section will drive most headphones and earphones beautifully, but it also has a very unique and effective feature. It has dedicated switchable amp circuits optimized for each of the headphones in Focal's flagship range. The Elear, the Clear, the Utopia, Elegia, and Stelia. So make sure to try the Arch's headphone specific settings with each of those headphones. At this year's CanJam, Moon Audio is going to have a focused exhibit as opposed to the huge show within a show type exhibits they usually have. And their focus for CanJam New York? Digital audio players and IEMs. Now even though Moon Audio will be more focused at this CanJam, they'll still have a lot of gear to check out. So scrolling on the screen now are the brands Moon Audio will be showcasing at CanJam New York. A couple of the highlights I'll mention. This is the iBasso DX220, which is iBasso's flagship player and one of the most well-regarded high-end players on the market today. Why? fantastic sound, and extremely low noise. Moon Audio will also have IEMs by QDC at their exhibit, and QDC makes one of my top reference IEMs with their Anoli VX. Now what's really cool is that Moon Audio's QDC Anoli VX is a special makeup that includes a unique colorway and a more standard two-pin connector for greater compatibility with third-party IEM cables, including of course those made by Moon Audio. Now of course there'll be many more digital audio players and IEMs than these at Moon Audio's exhibit, so make sure not to miss it. Now the one exception to Moon Audio's CanJam New York digital audio player and IEM theme will be the presence of the Warwick Acoustics Aperio at their exhibit. Priced at $24,000, the Warwick Acoustics Aperio is designed to be a cost no object, no holds barred, electrostatic headphone system. Now I expect there will be a line to hear the Aperio, but I'll make sure to find the time to audition it at Moon Audio's exhibit. Empire Ears is always a popular exhibit at our CanJam events, and that's because their family of IEMs is so complete, so varied. You can opt for something more reference, something more bass heavy, something brighter. It's such a beautifully fleshed out family of IEMs. I still think my favorite overall IEM from Empire, especially when you consider the value for the price, is their Phantom. Now the Phantom is a safe tuning, one that hits a wide variety of tastes and preferences, with a gorgeous balance, detailed and fast, but smooth. The Phantom's bass is mildly emphasized, but right where I like it, and the Phantom images beautifully. 
Also make sure to check out Empire Ears IEMs with electrostatic tweeters, the Valkyrie and the Wraith. The Valkyrie uses three different driver types in each ear. A dynamic subwoofer, one balanced armature for mid-range, and an electrostatic tweeter for the highs. Its sound is bold and impactful. Big powerful bass and sparkly treble frame a crystal clear mid-range. The Valkyrie has a strong, forceful sound signature. The Wraith is more of a reference, more neutral, more linear, with a flatter sounding signature. The Wraith has 11 drivers per side, 7 of those drivers are balanced armatures, and the other 4 drivers in the Wraith are electrostatic tweeters. And those 4 electrostatic tweeters per side add a sense of extension and air without any harshness. Anyway, make sure to check out the Empire Ears Phantom, the Valkyrie, and the Wraith, and the rest of Empire Ears IEMs at the show. I love good tube audio gear, and no it's not because I like shopping for tubes and tube rolling, I'm actually one of the rare tube audio enthusiasts who does not enjoy that part of it at all. No, what draws me to good tube gear is the sound of good tube gear. The tonal colors, the richness, the holographic presence of solid feeling sonic image objects within the soundstage. And this KNHA6A, which you'll be able to hear at CanJam New York, this KNHA6A thrills me to bits. The KNHA6A is a high-end tube headphone amplifier that uses either of two included sets of power tubes, Genelex Gold Lion KT88s or Electra Harmonix EL34s. So far I've only used the KT88s and the HA6A has been absolutely magnificent with them. Now I will try the EL34s at some point though. The HA6A also uses two new old stock RCA 22DE4 rectifiers and two Electra Harmonix 12AU7EH tubes for voltage amplification. The HA6A can also be run in two different modes, triode mode if you prefer richer harmonics and a smooth lush holographic sound, or ultralinear mode which you can choose for improved power and extension, ideal for when you favor a lot of punch, dynamics, and control. I'm a triode sound kind of guy, so it's almost always in triode mode for me. When I first powered up the KN HA6A, I immediately paired it with the Sennheiser HD800. The HA6A does such a beautiful job giving a sense of body and smoothness to the HD800, somehow without dulling it at all, that I haven't even looked for my Sennheiser HD800S, which I usually prefer. I also use the HA6A to drive the headphone by head audio, and that more neutrally tuned headphone is the richer for the pairing. It's absolutely superb. Anyway, if you want to hear what a fantastic tube headphone amplifier sounds like, Can's Exhibit is an absolute can't miss. KN will also be at CanJam with their latest high-end portable audio player, the KN N62. The premium portable player market is ultra competitive, but KN's N62 is very well positioned, full featured, and modular. That is, with the N62 you can swap out what KN calls user replaceable audio motherboards. The motherboards each contain the DAC and analog amplification stages, so swapping them out is essentially turning the N62 into a completely different player. There are three different motherboards to choose from. The one I settled on is one they call the T01 motherboard. Now the T01's DAC section is built around dual PCM1792A DACs. Its amp section has both 3.5mm unbalanced and 4.4mm balanced outputs and will output up to 530 milliwatts into 32 ohms, which is serious drive. But when I plug in the Sony IERM9 IEMs, the background is black. So it's very versatile and also beautiful sounding. It has a detailed smoothness that reminds me a bit of Sony's flagship Walkman, the NWWM1Z. And again, there are two other motherboards you can choose from. Anyway, what a fantastic, versatile, flagship class player KN has with the N62. This is the Campfire Audio Solaris Special Edition. Campfire Audio will have this Solaris SE at CanJam New York, but at the time of shooting this video, they were close to being sold out. Now with its natural abalone inlaid lids in different colorway, the Solaris SE has a look that sets itself apart from the standard Solaris. But inside there are also some changes. Changes designed to enhance and refine the standard Solaris' sound while remaining very much a Solaris. One of the key enhancements inside is this dense, intricate acoustic chamber. It's made out of an advanced high-density ceramic material and it is meticulously crafted. This tiny but surprisingly heavy, highly detailed structure is actually made for Campfire Audio by one of the most respected advanced ceramics manufacturers in the world. Beautifully done. Now again, the Solaris SE might be sold out by the time CanJam New York starts, but if it is, Campfire Audio will also have the standard Solaris to listen to. Of course, for years now, the Campfire Audio IEM that's been the most popular of all their models has been their Campfire Audio Andromeda. I can't think of too many IEMs that have been as universally praised as the Andromeda. And what makes it so universally lauded is both its tonal balance, which from bass through to high treble pretty much hits right down the middle of a wide variety of sonic preferences, and the Andromeda's imaging and soundstage, which is wide and airy for a closed in-ear. Now what has me thinking a lot about the Andromeda is Campfire Audio's new Solstice, which is essentially a custom IEM version of the Andromeda that Ken Ball told me sounds very similar to the Andromeda, yet better in every way. 
a custom IEM that has the tonal balance of an Andromeda, but with sonic improvements across the board. He has my attention. I'll definitely be checking out the Solstice at Campfire Audio's exhibit and suggest you do too. As we reported last year, Mr. Speakers is now called Dan Clark Audio. And at CanJam New York, Dan Clark Audio is showing their Aeon 2 headphones. Now, to be clear, the Aeon 2 is not based on the original Mr. Speakers Aeon series. The Aeon 2 uses drivers that are completely new designs with an updated motor structure that's flipped 180 degrees to clear the path between the diaphragm and the ear. Also, the Aeon 2's flow elements have been streamlined and machined to tighter tolerances. And the Aeon 2 also uses a new driver damping design. I spent a lot of time with the closed-back Aeon 2, and it's easily one of the widest imaging closed-back headphones available today. It's also very resolving and has a beautiful, rich tonal balance. Also, with the Aeon 2 series, both the closed-back and open-back versions definitely sound similar tonally, which is quite an accomplishment. Now, whether you go with the open or closed version, the Aeon 2 offers performance for the price that is tough to surpass. The new Aeon 2 family also has one of the nicest folding mechanisms I've seen on a headphone, collapsing the headphone down to this very compact size and with this great super compact case. Now at CanJam New York, make sure not to miss Dan Clark Audio's Aeon 2 headphones, as well as their Ether 2 family and their electrostatic flagship, the Voce. Ask me what the best built headphone in the world is, regardless of price, regardless of type. I mean in terms of machining quality, mechanical feel, materials, intricacy of design, fit and finish. And my answer would be immediate. My answer would be unequivocal. It's the Meza Audio Empyrean. As I've said before, of all the headphones in the world, at any price, I don't think you can find a more exquisitely built headphone than this. Of course, such a superlatively built headphone only means something if it has the sound worthy of all that. And with its dual coil planar magnetic design, the Meza Audio Empyrean most certainly does. Meza Audio's IEMs are also outstanding. Their flagship IEM, the Rypenta, uses five drivers per side with one dynamic driver and four custom balanced armature drivers. The Rypenta's dynamic bass driver delivers an impactful but neutral linear bass response, and the overall signature of this earphone is very balanced. They've chosen beautifully engineered restraint with the Rypenta's dynamic driver. Meza Audio will also be showing the much more affordable Meza Audio Rai Solo IEM. The Rai Solo is very affordably priced and uses one dynamic driver per side. The Rai Solo's driver design is quite unique. Instead of using voice coil wires glued to the diaphragm, which can cause unbalanced vibration, the Rai Solo has a diaphragm that itself is electrically conductive with a silver alloy membrane and split into positive and negative conductive halves. It's called a Unified Pistonic Motion Driver, or UPM for short, and it results in the diaphragm having symmetric pistonic motion. The sound of the Rai Solo is balanced with mild bass emphasis, and the performance you get for the price with the Rai Solo is absurdly strong. And like Meza's Rai Penta and Empyrean, the Rai Solo is also beautifully built. Odyssey will be at CanJam New York, and I suggest you get your ears on their entire lineup if you can. We all know Odyssey can make world-class flagships at flagship pricing. Their LCD i4 is their flagship open-back planar magnetic IEM, and it's still one of the high watermarks for resolving ability in an IEM. Perhaps only the full-range electrostatic Shure KSE 1500 is its equal in this regard. And of course, Odyssey has flagship full-size over-ears like the LCD-4 and LCD-4Z. I have to say, though, that as impressed as I am with Odyssey's flagships, it's a couple of their more affordable efforts recently that have completely blown me away. I'm talking about the Odyssey Mobius and the new Odyssey LCD-1. Okay, no, the Mobius and LCD-1 do not approach multi-kilobuck Odyssey performance, but man, both punch way above their prices for performance and features. And when it comes to features, the Mobius is, as I've said before, probably the most technologically advanced gaming and movie headset in the world. We've covered the Odyssey Mobius in a dedicated episode of HeadFi TV, so I won't go over it all again here. The Mobius has amazing 3D sound processing and rendering, and it's also a fantastic LDAC-equipped Bluetooth headphone, so I'll often carry the Mobius around for use as a wireless music headphone, gaming headset, and movie headset. Now, if the Mobius and all its included technologies and processing isn't your speed, and you want to go fully passive with an Odyssey LCD model that is solidly affordable, then the LCD one is outstanding. And in my opinion, it may end up being a very significant headphone in this market in the years to come. Why? Because I can't think of a headphone at or under the LCD one's price that would be a more revealing, more neutral open back studio monitor headphone. The Odyssey LCD one is one of my sonic palette cleansers. It realigns me with neutral when I listen to it, yet responds to EQ wonderfully. It's going to be significant because at its price and performance, it will become a standard, a reasonably priced standard with audiophiles and a premium standard in the pro audio world for studio use. Go to Odyssey's exhibit and listen to the Kilobuck big guns they're best known for. But if you're time limited, it's the Odyssey Mobius and the LCD one that I recommend you check out first. 
Astalin Kern and JH Audio will be exhibiting right next to each other at CanJam New York. That should come as no surprise as they maintain a strong partnership with Astalin Kern selling their affordable JH Collaboration Universal Fit IEM, the Billy Jean, as well as their Collaboration JH Flagship Universal Fit, the Layla Aeon. Now the Billy Jean is a dual balanced armature design and it's one of the most affordable IEMs I can comfortably recommend for use as a studio monitor. The Layla Aeon is the latest version of JH Audio's flagship IEM in universal fit form. The Layla Aeon is a genius piece of engineering. The previous version of the Layla was huge, as its free phase waveguide design used silicone tubes of varying lengths to get the drivers in phase, the longest of those tubes being 40 millimeters in length. Now the Layla Aeon instead uses something called the Sonic Tube Chassis. It's a 3D printed chassis that has chambers to house the 12 driver configuration and the free phase silicone tubes have been replaced with three Sonic Tubes SLA 3D printed right into the Sonic Tube Chassis with super tight routing that allowed the earpiece to be shrunken down to a far more compact size. And yet the Layla Aeon still sounds every bit the Layla. Again, brilliant engineering. Of course, at JH Audio's exhibit, they'll have their full lineup of customs, like this JH16 V2 Pro 10 driver custom IEM, and they'll also have their universals, including one I haven't seen or heard myself yet called the Roxanne Aeon. It's the Aeon version of the classic Roxanne. And at Astell and Kern's exhibit, they'll also have their brilliant digital audio players, which, in my opinion, still set the standard at the very high end of the high end portable players. And this SP2000 is their latest flagship and was the first portable player to use AKM's flagship AK4499 EQ DAX, which have current output architecture, and the SP2000 uses two of them in a dual mono configuration. It outputs 6 volts RMS from its balanced output and 3 volts RMS from its unbalanced output. It'll decode anything PCM or DSD. It has 512 gigs of internal memory, and I love having that much storage built in. The SP2000 has dual band Wi Fi support, a 5 inch touchscreen, octa core CPU, and open app support for streaming. I installed Kobuz and Tidal via APK so that I can download music to the SP2000 and make use of that 512 gigs of storage. Of course, as expected, the Astell and Kern SP2000 is very quiet in terms of background noise. From its unbalanced output at max output, the SP2000 had just a little over 3.5 microvolts of noise, which at that output level is only around 1 ten thousandth of a percent. Now, at typical listening levels, we measured just over 2 microvolts of noise. Fantastic. Astell and Kern will also have their new SA700 player at the show. I haven't had as much time to play with the SA700, but as you can see, if you're an Astell and Kern aficionado, the SA700 is designed to strongly evoke the spirit and design of their very first players, the AK100 and the AK120. Now, of course, the SA700 may look retro, but it's packed with very top-notch components from this era. Dual AKM AK4492 ECB DAX, quad-core CPU, beautiful 4.1-inch screen, and like I've come to expect from AK, the SA700 has a very low noise floor measuring between 2.5 and 3 microvolts at typical volume settings. Again, the SA700 only looks retro. iFi Audio will be showing their new portable, affordable DAC amp called the HipDAC. The rechargeable iFi HipDAC is priced at only $149, and it's a portable USB DAC and headphone amp that was designed to be pocketable. You can see it has a very thin profile. With its Burr Brown Bass True Native DAC, the HIP DAC will decode PCM to 24384, includes BitPerfect DSD support, and support for MQA. Its headphone amp has a balanced topology and includes a 4.4mm Pentacon balanced jack, as well as a standard unbalanced 3.5mm output. The HIP DAC's amp will output up to 400 milliwatts into 16 ohms, so there's a lot of drive to be had, especially considering how compact it is. With the little time I've spent with the HIP DAC so far, I've been using it with a headphone that might be perhaps a bit fancier than the headphones you're likely to see paired with the $149 HIP DAC, the Audio-Technica ATH ADX5000, which I love. The ADX5000 isn't the most challenging headphone to drive, but I had it handy, and it's a headphone that will quickly reveal harshness if it's there, and the HIP DAC did surprisingly well with the flagship Audio-Technica. At CanJam, iFi will also have this DAC and amp combo that they've partnered with Drop for. This is the Drop DAC, and the amp is called the Drop Can 6XX. Now, I don't have much info on the DAC yet, but I have a feeling this balanced amp might be of more interest to some of you anyway, because the Drop Can 6XX has a one button EQ for the immensely popular Drop X Sennheiser HD 6XX headphones. They're going to have this pairing at CanJam New York to get listener feedback. Of course, I was very curious to see what their HD 6XX EQ curve looked like, so I hooked the drop can up to the Audio Precision APX 555 analyzer to see. Here's the drop can without the 6XX EQ. It's flat as expected. And here's the drop can with the HD 6XX curve enabled. 
Now there are times I want a little more grunt from the HD6XX, and with the drop can, it's now just one button press away. Anyway, make sure to stop by iFi's exhibit to give them your feedback on this little system. Audio-Technica will be at CanJam New York with some exciting new headphones. Now here are two of the new over-ear Audio-Technica models, both closed back. This one is the Audio-Technica ATH-AWKT, and this is the ATH-AWAS, both of which use housings made of rare Japanese woods. In the case of the ATH-AWKT, the housings are made of a rare Japanese hardwood called kokutan, which is a striped ebony. The ATH-AWAS uses a wood called Asada Zakura, which is a Japanese cherry wood. Now these wood housings on both the AWKT and AWAS are gorgeous, both with a hand-finished half-gloss finish. Both the ATH-AWKT and ATH-AWAS use 53mm dynamic drivers. The AWKT uses German Permandor magnetic circuitry, and the AWAS has diamond-like carbon coating applied to its diaphragms, and both are hand-assembled in Tokyo. As for sound signatures, both the AWKT and AWAS have lighter, airier tonal balances. If you're looking for a heavy-hitting bass emphasis, look elsewhere. Both of these new Audio-Technica headphones tend toward lightness, excellent treble extension, and airiness, especially for closed-back headphones. Now, personally, of the two, I prefer the AWAS. While it's not as crisp and detailed as the AWKT, the AWAS has more warmth and body, the smoother of the two. Anyway, listen to both at the show and let me know which of the two you prefer. While you're at Audio-Technica's exhibit, make sure to listen to what I believe to be one of the most underrated flagship open-back headphones on the market today. This is the Audio-Technica ATH-ADX5000. It is absolutely one of my very favorite open-back electrodynamic full-size headphones you can buy today. The ATH-ADX5000 uses large 58mm dynamic drivers, the diaphragms of which are tungsten coated for improved rigidity. In terms of tonal balance, the ADX5000 is perhaps a wee bit brighter than I usually go for, but it has a unique incisiveness and wonderful detail retrieval, but presented in a sort of beautifully burnished, smooth way. I feel like I'm listening to a good electrostatic headphone when I'm listening to the ADX5000. It's fast, crisp, but still with a lovely tonal richness. It is the best sounding headphone I've yet heard by Audio-Technica. And the ADX5000 is also fantastically comfortable at only 270 grams and feels like it weighs next to nothing on top of my head. It's a can't-miss flagship at CanJam New York this year. At Shit Audio's exhibit, you can expect to see much of their product lineup. But if I had to pick something you have to try at Shit's exhibit, it's these. These are sibling amps, the Shit Audio Magni 3 Plus and the Magni Heresy. They're both Magni's, only different, which I'll get back to in a moment. They're both priced at $99. The Magni 3 Plus is silver, the Magni Heresy is black. Inside, though, the differences are substantial. Shit says the Magni 3 Plus is their ultimate expression of an affordable, all-discreet, current feedback headphone amp. The Magni 3 Plus was designed like a mini speaker amp right down to the driver stage and VBE multiplier. The Shit Magni Heresy is an all-op amp based headphone amp that uses super high quality parts, including a multiple paralleled output stage with feed forward. It was, among other things, designed to measure fantastically well, and it does. So let's compare their measurements. The Shit Magni Heresy measures superbly as it was intended to. In its low gain setting with a 2 volt input and volume maxed out, the Magni Heresy's Synad, that signal to noise and distortion ratio, is over 119.5 dB. The Magni 3 Pluses is just under 104 dB. As far as noise levels go, both are easily quiet enough to use with any sensitive IEMs. The Magni Heresy's noise level with a 2 volt input and volume maxed out is just a hair under 2 microvolts. That's insanely low. At a more typical IEM volume level, the Magni Heresy's noise level is around 1.5 microvolts. We're approaching the current limits of noise level measurement across the audio band with the finest audio analyzer in the world, the Audio Precision APX555. Now, the Magni 3 Plus's noise level at max volume with a 2 volt input is around 2.7 microvolts, and with a typical IEM volume level, it's around 2.2 microvolts. So the Magni 3 Plus is also quiet enough to use with super sensitive IEMs. In other words, the discrete Magni 3 Plus measures excellently. The op-amp based Magni Heresy measures superlatively. Again, these are $99 each. Now with all that in mind, what makes this an interesting exercise is when you plug headphones and IEMs into both of these amps and compare them. Do that at CanJam and tell me which one you prefer. If you stop me at the show, I'll tell you which one I prefer. Oris Audio is well known with tube audio enthusiasts as a maker of high-end tube amplifiers for driving loudspeakers and headphones. And this is their Oris Audio Uterpi. The Uterpi is a headphone tube amplifier, DAC, and preamp. Its amp section is a single-ended tube amp design that uses two PL95 tubes and one ECC81 tube. It also has a switch to help you optimize the amp for driving either low-impedance or high-impedance headphones, and it will output up to 900 milliwatts. 
DUTERPY's DAC will decode PCM up to 32384 and DSD to DSD128. As a DAC amp, the Uterpy is a beautiful all-in-one system that takes up very little desk space. And its gorgeous wood chassis also serves as a headphone stand, saving even more precious desk real estate. Now, I love driving the Focal Utopia with the Uterpy. It's a headphone that I find can benefit beautifully from a good tube amp like it. Right next to Oris Audio at CanJam New York will be Earmen, which is Oris Audio's sister company focused on portable audio. Earmen will have their extremely inexpensive Donald DAC portable USB DAC. The Donald DAC uses the Cirrus Logic CS43198 DAC, decodes PCM to 384, and DSD up to DSD 512. The Earmen gear arrived a bit late into our shooting schedule, so I haven't had much time to play with the Donald DAC yet. I did, however, have some time to play with this Earmen product. It's called the Earmen TR Amp. The TR Amp is a portable DAC and headphone amp with its DAC section built around the ES9038Q2M Sabre reference DAC. It'll decode PCM up to 768 kHz, DSD up to DSD512, and it's compatible with MQA as an MQA native hardware renderer. The TR Amp's amplifier section will output up to 400 mW into 16 ohms, and while I didn't have time to bench test the TR Amp yet, Earman says it has THD plus noise rated at minus 112.5 dB. To get some idea of its noise floor, I plugged in one of my go-to all-around IEMs, the Empire Ears Phantom, which happens to be one of the most sensitive IEMs I use, outputting 90 dB SPL at 1 kHz with just 4 millivolts. Now, if there's amp noise, the Phantom will dive right into it, and the TR amp had very low noise floor with the Phantom. Anyway, make sure to visit both Oris Audio and Earmen at CanJam New York to check out the Oris Uterpy, the Earmen Donald DAC and TR amp, and the rest of the products by both companies. Inuos will once again be joining us at CanJam. Inuos is a premium digital source specialist popular with the most serious high-end computer audio enthusiasts. Their music servers and streamers are extremely well regarded and reviewed by high-end computer audiophiles. In fact, our CanJam producer Ethan, who goes by Third Eye on the forums, uses the Inuos Zenith as his media server and he loves everything about it. Now at CanJam, you'll be able to try Inuos' music servers and streamers from their entry-level Zen Mini Mark III to their flagship Inuos statement. Inuos will also be showing their new Phoenix USB reclocker at CanJam New York. The Phoenix USB is designed to improve the sound quality from any digital source with a USB output. It takes the USB signal from any source and completely regenerates it to an extremely high precision signal to feed into your DAC, according to Inuos. For something that is so easy to install, it has a lot going on inside of it. Inside the Phoenix USB are three separate components, a USB regenerator, a linear power supply, and an external master clock with its own power supply. Now, Inuos will be demonstrating it at CanJam, so make sure to visit them to hear the Phoenix USB's impact on a system. I'm always excited when Sony exhibits at one of our CanJam events. My first good headphone audio rig was all Sony, and I've owned and used countless other Sony audio products since. It's also a company that's like no other, in that they're a huge multinational corporation, but they still make boutique audio products to challenge even the smaller, more artisanal audio brands. Now at CanJam New York, Sony will have their latest Walkman models, a couple of which I haven't even heard yet. And speaking of Walkmans, one of the things I love about Sony is how their flagship products often have long legs. This Sony NW-WM1Z is their flagship Walkman, and it has been for around four years. And it's still one of the best sounding portable players you can buy. Sony will also have their latest IEMs with the IER-M7, the IER-M9, and the flagship IER-Z1R. Listen to them all if you can, but if I had to pick just one of these, I'd recommend you try the IERM9 for its performance at its price and for its comfortable form factor. The IERM9 has five balanced armature drivers per side, including a magnesium diaphragm super tweeter BA. The M9 has what I would call an outstanding, more reference type sound signature and with great detail and air up top. At CanJam, Sony will also be demonstrating their fascinating immersive 360 reality audio technology with their very popular WH-1000XM3 headphones. So that's something you want to make sure to try at CanJam too. I'm a big fan of products by Anchor. I have several of their power banks and I have Anchor power adapters and chargers all over my house and office. For me, when it comes to power related devices like those, I have to trust that they're well engineered, well made and safe. And with Anchor, after years of using their power gear, I've come to trust them. So a few years back, when Anchor announced a true wireless earphone called the Zolo Liberty Plus on Kickstarter, I ordered it right away. Now this was before true wireless was the fast growing form factor and category it is today. Long story short, for the time, the Zolo Liberty Plus was good enough that I used it a lot for exercising. And once you go true wireless for working out, it's hard going back to wires. 
At CanJam New York, Soundcore by Anchor will be exhibiting. And one of the products you can expect to hear there is the Soundcore Liberty 2 Pro True Wireless Earphones. Now versus the Zolo Liberty Plus that came before it, the Soundcore Liberty 2 Pro feels to me like it's a generation or two beyond. The Liberty 2 Pro uses what Soundcore calls Astria Coaxial Acoustic Architecture. It integrates a customized Knowles Balanced Armature and an 11mm Dynamic Driver in a coaxial arrangement. The Liberty 2 Pro also has Hear ID sound customization that analyzes your hearing and tailors a sound profile that adjusts for each of your ears individually. It also has Bluetooth 5, a 4 microphone array for phone calls, and Aptex. It'll run for 8 hours on a charge with 32 hours of total playtime with its charging case. Now for its very affordable price, the Soundcore Liberty 2 Pro should definitely be on your list of contenders if you're shopping for true wireless earphones. Now I imagine Soundcore will have their complete lineup of earphones and headphones at the show, so make sure to pay them a visit. When I talk about headphone amps based on THX's AAA technology, I often show you this. This is a headphone measurement amplifier that THX generously built for HeadFi's measurement lab. Now there's only one exactly like this one in the world, but as this lab headphone amplifier is built around THX's flagship AAA version, the THX AAA 888, you can buy an amp that is rather like it. The very best of the AAA amps available on the market that we've so far used is without a doubt Benchmark's HPA4. Based on the THX AAA 888 and with one of the most advanced volume controls on the planet, the Benchmark HPA4 can be used as a balanced headphone amp and preamp. Now from its unbalanced headphone output, it has a noise level at typical volume levels of around 1.9 microvolts, which is lower than even the very best measuring high-end portable digital audio players. So the HPA4 will have a dead silent noise floor with even the most sensitive IEMs. And yet it can also drive up to 6 watts into a 16 ohm load and delivers gobs of voltage into 300 ohms, so virtually any over-ear headphone is also well within its envelope. And if you happen to have a headphone measurement lab, simply set the HPA4's volume level to unity gain and you'll have an amp that is a very close cousin to this custom piece by THX. Now of course Benchmark will also have their excellent DAX at CanJam paired up with their amps and the Benchmark DAC 3 HGC and HPA4 combo is one of the reference systems here at HeadFi HQ. Despite all we've just gone over, that's still just a fragment of the gear you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam New York this year. Again, CanJam New York is happening February 15th and 16th at the New York Marriott Marquis Hotel in Times Square. Of course, we didn't have time to cover every exhibitor in this preview, so scrolling on your screen now is a list of all the companies exhibiting at CanJam New York 2020. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in New York and on the forums at headfi.org.